Okay, I want to look at the British pound against six currencies here. And I'm running the Australian dollar, Swiss franc, the New Zealand dollar, the CAD, the yen, and the, the dollar. And I put up 100 pips of uh, risk there. So that's 400 pips down here on this guppy. And um, if I just did a thumbnail analysis of where I'd throw in some buy limits just to feel like I'm participating in the market, I would definitely have a buy limit here, right? Previous top. And then I put a buy limit here. Look at this wonderful entry here on the... Um, just look at look at the beauty of this uh, one period moving average. I, I run exponential just because otherwise you're gonna, you're gonna get some weird. Uh, it doesn't seem to track on a simple. But look at this beautiful top became a bottom in the four hour, presupposing you have the patience to wait 16 hours to get filled on that buy limit. But wow, that's a nice clean. And then you're already long before we break this out. You could have still got out of the break out of that trend line, right? That that fractal. That's what Bill Williams uh, teaches. You know, he's getting in on these fractals. In other words, this this top here, he's going to get in there, right? Um, he's going to put a buy stop above this triple, and he made money, right? Uh, of course, he has to risk all the way to there. Right? We we have to know that going in. But look how look how it respects the hundred pip handle, an even penny, um, rounded off, right? And this I don't have this painting out beyond this. But obviously, this down here is probably a big, uh, a big deal. But okay, so what's what? That, that's my current uh, thing there. And of course, I'm just going to sell up. Uh, if I go to the weekly, I can't really find a place to sell. But look how we're banging up against this monthly pivot right now. So definitely, we're in the sell territory on this pound Australian. Um, definitely putting a, a limit up here. Of course, you're not going to get filled. Not anytime soon. That's like so far, right? But look how this thing beautifully um, behaving in this channel that is just uh, really exquisite, right? I mean, I don't know if it gets any cleaner than that. Um, it's just it's a, the cleanest thing in the world. I can't seem to um, stretch that out. There's no uh, hot key to get into that. Apparently, I got to build one. But look how it rejected this. Uh, this here. This was supposed to be where the sellers were going to come in on the monthly. It just blew right through that. So yeah, that's why you want to stop, right? But look at this double top becomes a bottom on the monthly. I mean, once you put up this one period moving average. You'll just never go back to candles. And look at how this bottom became a top here. It's just another exquisite situation. You could even make it, uh, if you really drill this down, you're going to look at angular support and resistances like that in the monthly, right? Look at this. Look at them just pound through that. That was supposed to hold up as uh, whatever. But I think that rides over on the pound Australia on the monthly coming damn close to being the ride over. Of course, look at the weekly. Look at the launch pad off of this nice big fat top. Got an inverted head and shoulders there. Uh, you had a you had a head here. Big pivot for the wick entry people. Big uh, don't have to be there trade. That's the weekly. All right here's the daily. Now we're climbing up this mountain on the daily for the daily people, right? They got this channel built. They're like, hey, but puppy's still going up. But at 100 pip wick on this is a little bit rich for my blood. So I don't trade the these pound pairs because all my scripts were written pretty tight in terms of maybe 25 pips, right? I don't want to sit here. Besides, the spread here is right on close is 45 pips, right? I mean, it's going to tighten up when they open up. But the spread kind of sucks. This is not a scalper's world. But that's the Pound Australia. And just to um, re-beat up on the video I just did about this guy from Empowered, he's selling into this thing. Now, now mind you, he, in the same date he did that video, he's selling into this thing. So he's, he's going against the trend again. This is the daily trend. I mean, even, uh, even somebody with uh, a 
modicum of, you know, just a, a scratch of uh, thinking, is if you're able to draw this, for the first time you can draw this line, you know, right, you have an uptrend, you can see the rollover point and thing comes back, but you certainly can't deny this trend line. And what is not screaming bullish here about this damn pair? Of course, everything, right? Now, when we go on to the, um, and of course, the one hour traders, right? It's just kind of scalpsville, right? You definitely, the double top here was your entry. Um, you, you, you didn't get filled. I guess you could have gotten a, a fractal entry stop out. Of course, there's more fractals on the one hour, and you're just going to have a lot more trading activity and a lot more stuff to have to worry about. So I don't see, it's kind of hard to keep track of that many pairs. Of course, maybe if you're doing methamphetamines, you can keep track of every, all 25 or 40 currency pairs. Um, okay, this. So I'm going to go to the. I'm going to go to the uh, pound CAD. So pound CAD's the f the first thing that's showing signs of uh, giving up the ghost a little bit. Here's a four hour. Um, of course, it always depends. You know, if you're scalping the five minute, you don't really care too much. Um, let's go daily. So daily. Let's go to monthly. So so where are you at in the big picture, right? I mean, that, that's always I guess the key question. The big picture, a lot of people drill down, start off with a monthly, right? Probably a good idea. Definitely the sellers came in like crazy on this puppy at the quadruple bottom. Man, they just bam. And uh, maybe this is the uh, guy if you're if you're bearish, right? You're looking for a retest of this to get to get short on that. For at least a pullback of a uh, about uh, how many pips would that be? You're going to come back to this uh, flat top for your first uh, take profit, or maybe, maybe even this top. But that's a good, uh, damn, that's like, what, 200, 300 pips of comeback. Um, and your entry here, had you drawn your trend line on these treetops, these triples, you'd have a more aggressive entry, but you still had the good old fashioned top became a bottom here entry, right? With a pending. You got filled on the wick, and you didn't have to be there. And um, wow, that thing was just off to the races. The pound just killing everybody. Um, now the pound definitely having a problem against the Swiss franc. Of course, Swiss franc, a lot of people won't trade anymore. You know, it's like a Doberman that turned on him and said, "Hey, take it out back and shoot it." Let me just turn on this uh, this guy here now. Yeah, this pound. Uh, Trading a lot of pips. We closed here a 30 pip spread on this broker. Um, it's going to tighten up certainly when the market opens. But here's a nice entry, right? This top became the bottom, and then the stairway to heaven would be uh, having orders here at the buy limit. Kind of, kind of, they kind of went after you here. Now this is the this is the problem with trading here. Is this stuff here? That's only about a um, you know 100 pip, 120 pip wick there. Okay, that's a problem, right? And look at look at how wiki, you know, wiki this puppy is. And uh, certainly, you want to be buying here again, though, because just like uh, unlike the real world, you can really remarry your wife five times, right? And uh, enjoy the divorce uh, six times. And look at that! Look at that revisit! Look at that retest! So just getting in on uh, resistance retest, and even the guy that sold up here. Who had to take some heat? Hopefully, he didn't do a uh, one of those uh, retail things where you put your stop just above that. Hopefully, he had, hopefully he sold up into that hard, right? But you didn't make much money. But you definitely knew your exit was going to be here, right? If you sold up here, you had to know that all your all your selling up here, you had to get out here, right? And when you bought here for this, you had to get out here, right? Your first take profit. The rest you could let ride, and um, this is that this is that classic uh, price pulse here, right? This add to that, right? So that's that the typical hesitation node that you run into. You kind of get it here, but it's the failure swing, right? So you know that uh, this is ripe, and this is great. You made uh, what 150 pips. You're up on that trade. I'll be definitely taking profits at this point. Or anywhere along the line. I mean, once market pauses on this this lower time frames, you want to get the hell out. So let's go to the guppy. 
This is a big favorite. People love the guppy. And it probably has more structural integrity than the um, other pairs, which are kind of like uh, crazy. This would be your price projection off of this pulse. You certainly made it in terms of price. Um, you know, for the harmonic, which actually the word means, um, you know, an interval of vibration. And if it's equal, right, harmonics are split. Uh, it's a split wave. If you, if you take that, right, it takes you to there time-wise, and it takes you to that. So you can see that harmonic there. You don't need a Gartley. The Gartley's just going to make you, well, they're, they're adorable, right? Um, who can resist? And here is the other price pulse that you were counting on, say, if you hung it off of this, right? And you find the lowest close in there. And I guess you kind of make it, but you make it, it takes a long time to get there. The sell on here would have been to notice that this was the pivot, and here was the cell. You took about 50 pips of heat. Here was a cell again. There was three cells in there. So you could accumulate a position. You're, and you're, you're bearish on this, the fact that if you can draw a trend line, right? The only rule here is can you draw a trend line? And that, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible because it really shouldn't go past. This is your first uh, trend line you can draw, and you can copy that, clone that out, and find the channel, find the pitchfork, which would probably be this uh, under over here. And anywhere you can hang this off of the... Uh, so you can build this kind of envelope-ish channel, right? When you have envelopes, you can get in on these internal pivots, and then you're going to come out with these horizontals and realize that, you know, for the bears, they're going to be want to take profits there, and the bulls are going to want to get long there. And this is the critical top that became the double, this became the, the launching pad for this big move up, right? So this was the key, if you can see the uh, the double top here, right? So you have the, there's your double tops. Here's the key pivot. There's the launching pad. Here's the node, and that's that projection. But now, if this doesn't hold, which it didn't, it's a big problem because the next support's going to be this, right? Which was this. So you're going to get in around this zone, but it's a zone entry. I wouldn't say you put one order in there and it's like uh, you just bought one lottery ticket, you scratched the window. You got to, even people that may trade a lottery or buy lottery tickets you know that they're going to have to buy a lot of, even people that go to, my buddy went to the casino, he went to the dollar machine and he, I think he was 150 bucks in, he made five grand, right? Of course, he had to be able to walk away from that. Um, you know, you got to be able to have the discipline to walk away, even from the market after you just cleaned up. And look at this beautiful top that became a bottom on the four hour. If you're running four hour charts, I guess it is doable to get into these trades, but that is like, that's the setup, right? And then bingo, bango, it's probably cutting through um, into monthly territory at that point. Okay, well, that's the guppy, right? And, and currently the guppy on the um, four hour is, you know, the, the, the shorts are loving it, right? But realize that, you know, the bulls are going to want to come in when we come down at least 100 pips. So I'm going to come in. If I was trading this thing, I'd come in here, right, at the at the, at the blockhead number of $1.90. I mean, just for a scalp at least, right? Make some kind of money. And then maybe, maybe if it hovers there, maybe if things consolidate there, and patterns form on the one hour, so you have a one hour against a four hour, but you're always, you know, cer certainly in the five minute, one minute world is just a completely different lifestyle than people that want it. You know, they have a day job and they want to put orders in that makes sense and a pending um, buy limit that is like 180 pips away from current price. You know, I never thought those would fill, but they do. And uh, you'd be surprised, right? Um, just maybe just trade the British pound on one broker only put all these up now here's the New Zealand we've got this beautiful wedge on the four hour now this is going to be the a lot of people uh, everybody's looking at this wedge right now on the pound uh, New Zealand and so it's painfully obvious and uh, what to do about it well that's a whole nother thing I think I would definitely be selling um, well, let's take a look at the daily right so let's Let's go out, and New Zealand's getting crushed because they lowered their interest rates. So fundamentally, for all the fundamentalists, they're t definitely riding this thing like a banshee. 
to the upside. But, you know, the party's going to be over soon. I wouldn't short it right here. I'd have to go to the one hour to even see. Like, I would just start scalping it on the one hour. I think when, when you're in this climax mode here, it's really ripe for the scalping. Now, here is uh, literally 100 pips a day on this thing. If you, if you draw this, that's a 100 pip grid. So the velocity here at 100 pips a day, um, you know, you're almost tracking at 100 pips a day if you consider this to be like a moving average or a uh, pip per day average, and you're holding the 45 degrees on that. Um, wow, this thing's getting really overbaked. For the scalpers, they're loving it. I'm sure anybody that had a sell limit here and got filled on these wicks or was just selling up into resistance, they're like, wow. Now, the, the thing's going to be is, are you going to enter on a sell stop here? And if you did, I would say you're going to have to risk quite a bit. That was obviously the last chance to get long for the bulls. They, they had the buy limit here at this uh, thing, or they had them down here and they didn't get filled. And so we're walking up this channel, but... It's just, it's nuts, right? It definitely looks like we're going up another leg. Of course, it doesn't mean we can't stop hunt back into here. So if you did want to go long, maybe your buy limit's down here. And you're going to make 80 pips, so your exit's going to be... Like, if you're getting in if you're getting in here, obviously, you got to get out here. Like, if you got in here, you're going to exit here, right? But we haven't come down and played this drama out yet. But definitely, you're selling up here. And you're going to blindly sell up there just because... Some of these are scalps and some of these, and you just build into whatever you can psychologically stand. If you don't like losing 25 pips, put your put two orders in at 15, put your two orders in at um, 10 pips a piece, right? If you had 10 pip stops on two orders, it equals one order with a 20 pip stop, and it's more work, right? It's just more work to put those orders in, and that's why people don't do it, because... People's ego is at a level at which they're like, I know I'm right, I'm trading 10Ks. I met a guy years ago, he was trading 100 period moving average, a 200 and a 50, right? He had the system, you go along when they all cross over. I asked him how big he was trading, he said I was trading two 10Ks. He's trading two 10Ks. And I said, well, why don't you trade um, four or five Ks, you know? Oh, well, you know, it's too much work, right? Gotta manage four, oof. No, but... Why not be scalping, right? Why not be scalping? Why is your store, why can why when I come to your store, I can't buy a Mercedes keychain for 25 bucks and act like I've got a Mercedes? I gotta buy $80,000 car to get the keychain? I mean, certainly the, the, the swag factor of selling a t-shirt, right? Um, is, you know, that's how people made money in the old days. You know, you go to a concert, you buy the t-shirt, right? 20 bucks, I mean, it's not worth 20 bucks, but it's got the tour on it, Dana, and you feel, feel like you're somebody, right? Um, at, le at least for that, right? So, yeah, I mean, let's face it. Uh, okay, anyways, this thing is definitely getting uh, overbaked, right? And look how far we've come on the daily New Zealand. And if you zoom out, wow, this thing is just nuts. But this will be the one, to, if you have the patience to wait for the the uh, climax here we can kind of speculate we're coming up real close if we're going to use this as our um our uh, launching pad um take it up to this node here find the highest close which is here i guess so we're actually projecting up into that but uh, you know on the on the on the four hour world right i was trying to keep this to a four hour thing but that's that's a lot of pips man so you can run wide stops in that don't forget to you're gonna have to be like trading a lot smaller and here's the last one up for bids is the uh, dollar us which um looks like the uh the guppy where you're just getting pounded here this is kind of easier to trade i think this is at least the seven pip spreads a lot tighter i, I trade the majors i mean i wouldn't trade these you know, it's like dating a hooker, I think. If you trade these wings at the wide spread, you just don't know what you're going to get. And uh, here to the 100, we can obviously see, you know, and where's the retail trader stops? All the bulls got their stops here. I mean, this is just look for where, you know, if 95% of people are losing, uh, let's look for what they're doing and where they got their stops are all here. So... We're about to take that stop out. Maybe we're going to clean house, and it's just going to carve out this whole space here, right? 
um, it's going to look like this, right? You're going you're, you're to fall down into this cavern. Major supports here. And uh, what, what's the rate of descent there? And uh, definitely this is right buying area. Too late for me to get on the short train. Um, I think I'd have to drop down to the 15 minute to get on the short train. But even that, the short train left the station here when this support became resistance. This big, uh, right here actually. Now the 15 minute guys jumped on the train right there on that, um, where, they, where they grab it. Where it break, you know, it's the breakout, the pullback, and then the real plunge. The real move comes, and um, yeah, that's about to, that's about to really to really fall apart there. Uh, and in the upstairs way, it was easier to trade this currency pair than it was to trade the other ones, just from the standpoint of these kind of patterns that show up. You know, we get these easy peasy things. Uh, here's the triangle. Top becomes the bottom. Another chance to get in. Yeah, now it's running away from you. You're just chasing it. Get the retest. Here's the support that was supposed to hold. And, um, you know, for the bulls, they want to get back in here. Kind of missed that entry. They got in here, but it failed. So here's the support. And, um, you know, you just, you, you can't. Selling here, I just wouldn't sell there. I mean, that's just... Looks like we're gonna have to clean house there on the on the dollar pound, but uh, yeah, that's the pound around the world kind of view, and um, the pound. You just need a wider stop, right? You just really need to trade like crazy wide on that, and uh, yeah, that's my pound rundown with the one period exponential. A moving average the the, the uh, best cut secret in trading just put it on a bar chart and you're good to go